If you are an absolute beginner, this video is the perfect one for you because I will be assuming that you know absolutely nothing about how to play a keyboard. But if you are already an experienced player and you might want to be a teacher in the future, this video will be very useful for you because you can use these lessons and the concepts in this video as a starting first lesson for your students in future. If you're new here, my name is Jeremy C and welcome to the number one channel for unbiased, unsponsored and independent content about portable arranger keyboards as well as digital pianos. I have a list of my recommended pianos and keyboards in the description below. So do check it out if you are looking for a suitable keyboard for yourself. The first thing in this lesson are the number of ways you can use the keyboard. So what is a keyboard? A keyboard is essentially any instrument which has keys on it. For example, a piano, a traditional piano is a keyboard. A portable keyboard like this is a keyboard. Even a melodica is a keyboard. And an accordion which has keys on it, that is a keyboard. Anything that has this black and white keys looking thing can be essentially called a keyboard. However, when we talk about keyboard here, we're referring to this portable keyboard that you see right in front of me. There are many ways of using a keyboard in multiple scenarios, but in this video, I will be covering four of the major ways that people usually use their portable keyboards. Let's start with the most basic way of using the keyboard, which quite a number of people would use it for, and that is as a regular piano. So the way that most people use the keyboard is as a regular piano, like what I have set this up to do. And if you have an arranger keyboard like what I have here, the Korg PA700 Professional Arranger Keyboard, you can play it with styles or rhythm with automatic accompaniment. And the third way we normally use a keyboard is in a band environment. If you're playing together with a band, a bass guitar, a drummer, you will not be playing it this way. And it will be a pity if you only use the piano sounds to play the keyboard with a band because you can then use other instruments found on this portable keyboard like for example the flutes, the saxophone, the brass instruments, the woodwind instruments and the synth instruments in the keyboard to enhance the playing in a band scenario. However, I will not be covering how you use the keyboard in a band scenario because that is a lot of grounds to cover and out of the scope of this video. The fourth way you can use a portable keyboard is for music production. You can do it in a few different ways, but the most predominant way is to use either the onboard sequencer or song recording function on your keyboard if it has one, or if it doesn't have one or you want more capabilities, you can plug it in via MIDI to your laptop or your computer. And with a larger monitor, a larger screen and the computer mouse, it's a lot easier to maneuver around and create multi-track music production finished product, which you can then export it out as a final master file. The next thing is your posture when you are playing on the keyboard. So when you play on a keyboard, you want to make sure that you are sitting pretty upright. You shouldn't be sitting on a chair where you have a backing and that allows you to slouch and lean back and play your keyboard like this. No, that is not the correct way to play a keyboard. You want to make sure that you're sitting pretty upright or if you're standing, you want to make sure that you are able to stand at a comfortable position so that you can play for extended period of time. The height of the keyboard and the chair should be such that your arm should be parallel to the ground. So if you find yourself playing like this, then the keyboard is too high. Or if you find your arms like this in a downward position, then what actually happens is your chair is too high, your bench is too high and the keyboard is too low. So same thing if you are playing while you're standing up, make sure that you raise the keyboard high enough such that you will have 
a pretty parallel position of the arm to the ground. The next thing you want to know is how your fingers should be like when you are playing the notes. So you shouldn't be playing with your fingers all straight like this. You are not going to be able to express the notes well. Neither should you clench up all your fingers like this. What you want to be using are your fingertips. This, the soft part of your finger. That is what you want to be using when you are playing. You got to make sure that your fingers are bent in a pretty much 45 degree angle so that you can play well and express your notes correctly. The next thing you want to learn about is how you should number your fingers. So if you want to be able to use those music books that's available out there to learn, you want to know what those numbers beside the notes that you see means. So in music, whenever they are referring to finger one, they are always referring to your thumb. So this is always one, two, three, four, and your little finger, your pinky will always be finger number five. If the book asks you to use a finger number five, you want to make sure you're using your last tiny little finger to press the key. The notes that you play on the portable keyboard is represented by alphabets, by letters of the English alphabet, and it starts from A all the way to G. So it will go from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and when it reaches G, there is no H, and it would go right back to A again. So music goes in a cycle. The alphabetical system in music goes in a cycle. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A, B, C, D, E, F, G yet again. Next, I'm going to show you where the notes are on the keys of the keyboard. If you look at the keys of the keyboard, you will see black keys and you will see white keys. And you will see a little pattern, which is two black keys here, followed by three black keys, two black keys, three black keys. And it's going to be the same the other way, right? You have three black keys, two black keys. So this is going to be the one that will show you the way how to move around on the keyboard. Even though in music, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but when you are playing on the keyboard or the piano, the one that you want to concentrate on most is the letter C. And how do you find the letter C? All you need to do is find two black keys here, right? And the key to the left of this black key here is C. And you have C and the white key between the two black keys is D. C, D, E. F, which is on the left of these three black keys. F, G, A, B. And we will come back to C. So C to C is what we call an octave. D to D is what we call an octave. In the same way, E to E is also an octave. So you realize that it goes in a cycle. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I shall repeat. You find the two black keys, doesn't matter where it is, you find the two black keys and the white key on the left of this black key is a C. And before a C is a B, after the C is a D. So you have C here, two black keys. This is C, this is B, and on the right side, that is D. On every keyboard or piano, there is a special C. And what is that special C? The special C is middle C. That is the C that is found on the middle of the keyboard or the piano. And how do you find that C? Usually, it's under the branding of the keyboard or under the name, whichever name it says, Yamaha, Roland, Casio, usually in the middle of the keyboard. You look for the C that is nearest to the middle and this will be your middle C. Two black keys, the white note on the left, this will be middle C. Now I'm going to tell you what the black keys are. So let's look at this white key here. You have two black keys that will tell you that this is C and this is middle C. And next to this is D. D is the white key between the two black notes. So if you move to the black key to the left of the note, like this, this is actually a flat. A flat lowers the sound, the tone of this note by one step. So this will be D flat. D 
flat. And if you play the black note to the right of this D, you will get D sharp. D sharp raises the sound of the note by one step. That is D sharp. In the same way, this black note is also an E flat. This is an E and this is a flat. E flat. This is a D. This is a D sharp. So D sharp and E flat has the same sound even though they have different names. And this in music is what we call an enharmonic equivalent. So D sharp and E flat has the same sound but different names. In the same way, this is C and this is C sharp. This black key is C sharp, C to C sharp and D to D flat. And they are the exact same sound but they have different names. You will also very often come across what is called a chord. You will hear people say, I'm playing a G chord with this song or I'm playing a C chord in this song. And what is a chord? As long as you're playing three notes and above, three or more notes, these few notes will harmonize together to be called a chord. You can play four notes. You can play five notes if you want to. Any combination of note will form some kind of a chord. But you want to make sure that you are playing at least three notes to form the basis of a chord. I hope you guys enjoyed this very first beginner, totally basic keyboard piano lessons. This will make sure that you got the basics right and this is what I usually teach my students on their very first lesson. If you enjoyed this, make sure you leave a comment down below as well as smash that like button. You can also find a list of my recommended portable keyboards for different stages of your learning as well as digital pianos in the links in the description below. And I'll see you in the next video.